out of custody and right back in. Suspended Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiele has been rearrested by the Department of State Services after an appearance in court in Lagos. Emefiele was granted a 20 million naira bail, but after chaotic scenes outside the court, he was taken back into custody. Arise correspondent Oba Adeoye witnessed the drama. Godwin Emefiele arrived at court premises at around 9.20 a.m. in a white Elos van accompanied by fully armed and hooded men of the Nigerian secret police, popularly called the DSS. After some few minutes, he was ushered down from the van, clutching a copy of the Christian Holy Bible. Although he looked fit, he was not his usual self. The once celebrated banker was practically dragged in by a court registrar for the business of the day. He is accused of being in possession of firearms without a required license under the Nigerian law, but his lawyer applied to the court to grant him bail while the trial continues. After hours of argument and counter-argument, the presiding judge, Nathaniel Owebo, admitted a Mayfield to a bail in the sum of 20 million naira and one surety who must have a property within the court jurisdiction, among other qualifications. And then it was time for drama of the day, as the DSS decided to defy the court's decision and insisted on retaining the custody of Mr. Emefile, thereby disregarding the bail order. This sparked a face-off between the DSS officers and correctional services personnel who were determined to adhere to the court's directive to keep him in their custody until he is able to fulfill the bail conditions. sent for the officer in charge of the squadron that uh, you see milling around here, armed to the teeth and dressed with baraclavas, and said he was hearing something, would they wish to explain or would they want to comment on it? And asked me to repeat myself and I did said exactly what I've told you now. And his answer was that he's under instruction to secure his safety and therefore he's under instruction from his boss. How do you explain in a modern day, in this time, where the court has given an order granting bail to an accused person and then the law enforcement agents are waiting outside the court to rearrest that person, even whether with or without warrant, without obeying the order of court that has been made. After several hours of a free-for-all scuffle among these men on uniforms, the suspended governor of the central bank, Godwin Emefiele, was taken back into the custody of the DSS. If you have another offense, you are investigating him. You are purported offense, you are investigating him. Or you have another purported warrant. You should go and serve it to the Nigerian Correctional Service to produce him to court, not to take him to your custody. DSS is not the law. They are established by a piece of legislation. This is a country that runs on law, on rule of law. The constitution is our grand norm. That is what we are saying. The incident has raised questions and concerns about the adherence to court orders and the implications for the rule of law. As the situation unfolds, legal experts and observers are closely monitoring the development surrounding Mr. Emefiele's trial. The DSS attempt to further humiliate and arrest Mr. Emefiele is a desecration of the temple of justice. In fact, it disobedience of that court order, which is very clear, release the man on bail if he meets certain uh, conditions. Obey the court order. He, uh, the, the court says we are going to remind him in Ikoi prison. He is going to be there. He's not going to run away. What is difficult? If you have a case, go to court. After all, DSS has gone to magistrate court several times to get an order. Why are they not obeying the high court, federal high court order? 
Emefiele was arrested on June 10, 2023 by the secret police on allegations of economic crimes and terrorism financing. The arrest came just hours after he was suspended from office by President Bola Tinobo. Oba Adewye, Arise News, Lagos. Rights lawyers, one of the ages of lawyers in defense of democracy, have condemned DSS Director General Yusuf Bichi over what they called assault on the judiciary, lawyers, and prison officials. The lawyers also condemned the rearrest of Emefiele by the operatives of the secret police. The lawyers, in a statement by its leader, Barista Okere Kingdom, called on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to prove that he has regard for the rule of law by suspending and ordering Bichi's arrest. Rufai, we mm. were on air yesterday when mm. um, the court proceedings started and mm. look at what's happened. Your take I on mean, the story. So at first, we'll go to the substance of the matter, then I'll also say some things centered around nation building. So my take will be in two parts. Number one, the substance of the matter. This case had been on for a while. And December last year, the DSS tried arresting him FLA. Another drama ensued that never really made public media attention. When the Mephile came back to the country, he sailed through that. And when they went to court, the court told them that you don't have something substantive enough based on terrorism charges. Finally, they got their chance when President Tinubu is in there. And they arrested him. They talked about terrorism charges. After keeping him in detention under Akja for a while, they've not been able to see anything. Hence the charge of illegal possession of firearm. Which, when you also look at it and extrapolate, you say that there are many non-state actors that are brandishing firearms everywhere, but the DSS can't pick them up. So this looks a little slanted to me. And that continued until MFLA went to court. I think it was on the 13th of July that the court ruled that you either take him to court or you let him out on bail. That was pushed forward till today. The bail application was served. The government prosecutor, uh, in Kiru Nebo, and she said, oh, she had not seen it. And they had gone back and forth. Finally, the justice gave bail 20 million. With a surety in likes and with a landed property in Lagos. But once you, once you give somebody, obviously, a bail, <clears throat> the correctional facility should pick him up till he perfects the bail. The DSS claimed they got orders from above. And they should keep him and ensure his safety and security. There was a brouhaha a scuffle, a slugfest, that the DSS official actually manhandled the correctional prison services official in the public glare of the world media. We made a fool and a mockery of ourselves. You can see two government officials in a slugfest pulling each other just because of one man. When the pool was much, I understand that the men had to say, okay, we can't allow this to continue. Let me go with the DSS. They've taken him back to whatever destination they've taken him to. All of this is happening. The DSS keeps saying they got order from above. Order from above to violate court order, right? To violate the rule of law. Is that the order from above we get? Let me now speak as an, a patriot. Truth has to be said. You see, whatever we make of this democracy, posterity will judge all of us. And we need to be careful the things we do. It is sad that it is at a time that people that fought for democracy and called Abacha a dictator, it is at that time that we are seeing all of this happen. And let's be careful. I feel very sad for Nigeria. Democracy was asphyxiated yesterday, was gasping for bed like George Floyd. We suffocated the rule of law, but we should do better. Our national anthem says, oh God of creation, direct our noble cause and guide our leaders right, but help the youth the truth to know. In love and honesty to grow and living in just and true. Did we live in just and true with our activities yesterday? Great lofty heights attained to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Every time we read the pledge of this country, and we say we pledge Nigeria our country, to uphold its glory and honor and unity. Did the things we do to democracy and the rule of law yesterday uphold the glory, the honor of our democracy? That a court will rule, grant somebody bail, correctional facility up to pick him up, correctional facility is there to pick him up, the DSS tears 
the uniform of the correctional facility. Okay, what are the issues at stake? Yesterday, after another court had ruled that Godwin Emefiele, the suspended um, chairman, governor of the central bank, should be arraigned in court or allowed to go if there are no charges against him. The DSS, Department of State Services, came forward and said, indeed, there are charges. And yesterday, they arraigned him in court. What are the charges? Section 4 of the Firearms Act, dealing with illegal possession of firearms. Section 8 of the same Firearms Act, dealing with illegal possession, as they claim, of 123 rounds of ammunition. They said they found with him a, a jot of uh, Magnum A371 and then 123 rounds of ammunition without license. Okay? So yesterday, the DSS went for that and obeyed the order of the other court and arraigned him at the Federal High Court, the Court of Justice, Nicholas Owebo, uh, yesterday. Now, under Section 162 of ACAJA, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015, Emefele is entitled to bail. The learned judge, following the, what the law says, granted bail. He went, a, he, went a, he, he went a step further and said the accused person should be remanded at the Kuyi prison. But the uh, DSS, in their wisdom, decided to overrule the court in the court premises. And we had a drama yesterday of the DSS fighting uh, the officials of the Department of uh, Correctional Services, the DCOS, resulting in a situation where the squadron leader of that team had his uh, clothes torn and there was so much furor in the environment. And we were told that there was an order from above coming from the controller general of the, controller, uh, of the correctional services telling his men to stand down and allow the men of the DSS to go with Godwin Emefiele. These are the facts of the matter, the background. Now, what are the issues? The issues are as follows. When they teach law, they teach uh, law students, IRAC, what they call IRAC. So I'm trying to apply the IRAC rule. So what are the uh, uh, issues now? The issues are as follows. One, you find a situation whereby a judge of the high court gave a ruling and said, this man should be reminded should be remanded in the uh, Ikuyu prison. And then you find an agency of government overruling the court. That is shameful. It is disgraceful. It is abominable. It is unacceptable. And we even found in the situation lawyers taking video. Yeah, okay, maybe they were helpless in the matter. It was a sad day for the Nigerian judiciary yesterday. At the end of the day, the DSS imposed its will on the court. And what did they say? They said, order from above. Who gave that order? That's the second point. Who is the uh, person who has the effrontery to desecrate the integrity of the premises of the Nigerian judiciary, which we have always said is uh, the last hope of the common man? That person must be identified. Even if he's the president, he has committed an abominable offense. Who gave that order? You can't just overrule the court. Now the DSS. The DSS should be told in clear terms that the Department of State Services is not above the laws of the land. They can't overrule the courts. I know they did it under Buhari. I think President Tinubu has an obligation to make sure that that tradition is not continued. You can't overrule a court of law. Now, what the DSS of officials said, as quoted by uh, Joseph uh, Biodun Dabdu, J.B. Dabdu, lead counsel, is that, oh, there was another, and they already have a magistrate court uh, uh, 
uh, order to rearrest Godwin Emefele. A magistrate court order cannot overrule the order of a high court. One of the things they teach uh, elementary law students is about the hierarchy of courts. How can you say you have an order from a magistrate court and the order from a magistrate court overrules a high court? They will destroy this institution called judiciary if they continue like this. My next point is about synergy among the various agencies. Okay, the DSS went there in their full mind, they were carrying uh, sophisticated weapons and all of that, but the court had given that clear directive to the uh, Correctional Services uh, uh, Department. But the DSS in their wisdom, overwhelmed, overawed. So when President Tinubu talks about synergy among the agencies, what we saw clearly yesterday was the absence of synergy. So we are not even safe. Nobody can uh, expect the rule of law if you have agencies of government fighting over territory and overruling the courts of the land. That means that President Tinubu is presiding over chaos. And that is one thing that he has to address, putting the matter exactly as it is. At the end of the day, what is important is a point made by, again, I quote uh, J.B. Dawudu, you know, former SA, uh, SAN, former uh, president of the NBA, about the rule of law. The only way all of us can succeed in this environment is to have the rule of law prevailing. Before now, I quoted uh, Unikapo Braithwaite, uh, the editor of the lawyer pages of uh, Disney newspaper, who had written ahead of this disgraceful, shameful drama that we saw yesterday about the imperative of the rule of law. What we saw that yesterday was not just a desecration of the temple of justice, it was also a violation of the rule of law. President Tinubu must make a commitment. In fact, there must be a response from the presidency to this to show a commitment to the rule of law. A judge will say something and give a ruling, and then some kind of characters, unknown characters. They may say they are wearing DSS uh, uh, uniforms and acting on orders from above. But in this context, these are pers uh, uh, agents of the state who do we, we do not expect to behave like thugs, gangsters, bandits. And then we sit here, we are criticizing non-state actors. We are saying some non-state actors are misbehaving. If officials of state, agents of state, mm -hmm. if they behave like they are, they are motopark touts and bandits and gangs, mm -hmm. then what do you expect non-state actors to do? Non-state actors will just say, this is the norm. We do not want a situation where banditry, gangsterism, a violation of the rule of law is the norm under President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He owes us that obligation to protect the rule of law. That's the ultimate implication of the oath of office and the oath of uh, you know, uh, 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 allegiance. Of allegiance that he took when he assumed office on May 29, 2023. This should not happen under his watch. If it happens under his watch, we will call him out. We will not stay with the uh, ordinary boys behaving like bandits, saying they are acting on others from above. Others from above simply means the box stops at Tinubu's table. Absolutely. It has to take responsibility for it. Absolutely. I'm just to um, continue from there in terms of what happened yesterday. In the history of the judiciary in Nigeria, and perhaps this particular government, yesterday, the 25th of July, 2023, will certainly go down in history. And it is history that must not repeat itself in this nation. We have to recognize the fact that the world is watching. Yesterday we had the conversation around Nigeria being the giant of Africa, the jewel of Africa, or if it ever was, especially with regards to how it's viewed in terms of the, uh, around the world. And then a show of what a number of people have called a show of shame, disgraceful, embarrassing, should make you weep really when you watch that video and imagine that this 
is a democracy. This is a nation. This is a country. This is a federation. And this impunity or reign of impunity can continue. A number of people have condemned the actions. It goes without saying, as expected, lawyers, politicians, stakeholders, statesmen have come out to call out the DSS. Earlier this week, when we had Honorable Sakin Ada, I asked the question around um, the president's commitment and his promise to upholding democracy and the rule of law. And he said, oh, after the proceedings which took place yesterday, we will know he would then be able to speak because it would, it would be clear that the president is for and will protect democracy and the rule of law. Obviously, yesterday was a clear answer to that question. Beyond that, the fact that the presidency has remained quiet for close to 24 hours after that show of shame is a message in itself. And it's a message that Nigerians should not be willing to um, take lightly because if the president hasn't said anything with regards to one of its agents, an agent of government, then there's a big challenge there. I hope we can see the magnitude of what we have before us because it's not just about this case as we have said a number of times. It is the hope for the common Nigeria, the ordinary Nigerian. If a personality like, the, like a former governor or suspended governor of the CBN can be treated in such manner by an agent of government in terms of justice and fairness, then what's the hope of the common man in Nigeria? What's the hope of people who are going to about their legi legi legitimate duties and hoping that the courts will come to the rescue? If the court is not upheld, if democracy must work, it's not just the strength and the power of the executive or the strength and the power of the legislature. We must have a strong and independent judiciary. If not, we're joking. If not, we haven't even begun to cut or scratch what it means to be in a democratic institution, a democratic um, government. And then when we look at the, um, the other side in terms of the, the signal he sends to the international community, if you want people to come in to invest in your nation, Part of the measures you must put in place is that they are assured that things, that institutions work in the nation. What we think is just an isolated case has ripple effects. The president cannot say he's going around different countries and his vice to attract foreign investment when we are not ready. Our body language and the state of the economy does not demonstrate at all to the international community that we are ready to do business. If the courts can be so violated in terms of disrespected in this manner, then what hope do we do people who have matters to go before the courts have? No hope at all. So beyond this, there must be an outcry. We must hear from the president. We must hear from the presidency as to their state and position. And then the calls by politicians like Mr. Ayofayeshe, who said that the president must also act to suspend Airing officers, particularly the head of the DSS, Mr. Yusuf Bichi. He's not, I mean, he's not a stranger, he's not a stranger, and this is not the first time the, the DSS has acted in like manner. So there must be consequences. If not, impunity will continue to reign. Two months into this administration and a number of issues such like such as this, it does not all go well for this particular administration.